Hey guys, just a short video uh, to show something I just found out um, about the ZX81 uh, which I'm uh, servicing for the first time actually uh, I've done 3 or 4 today I think uh, that's because the ZX81 uh, is becoming increasingly interesting for people um, most of the time because people have used them as their first computer in the past um, but also because uh, they're, they're tending to get more valuable and in the past I just gave them away to people who liked it but uh, I think it's uh, time to service them and uh, get them to customers um, and including repairs for people who ask I will show you in a second what I'm struggling with uh, because I just solved it so I think you might like it well, What I've got here is a ZX81, an issue freeboard uh, this one is uh, refurbished already, so it got uh, it's got new capacitors, um, got got a composite video modification, and I got a ULA uh, heatsink on it, and I just put a DC DC converter instead of the Z7805 voltage regulator, and it will get a brand new membrane. Uh, of course, uh, actually I had to uh, swap the ULA chip because it was defective, so we got a, another one now, and this one is a 2C184E. So it's uh, one of the models people uh, say it, uh, it should have a problem with the back porch uh, causing some TVs not recognizing the uh, video output but I think because of the composite video mod uh, the problem is not um, present anymore because on my TV uh, here it works quite well. But um, uh, I want to talk about um, saving to tape um, because loading from tape works uh, very, very good on this uh, board even from smartphone, I didn't have to do anything to load from, from smartphone except, except of course use a, a stereo um, plug for my smartphone and um, it will work as well on a data recorder like this one because uh, I didn't connect the um, ring of the connector so uh, it won't make any short circuit whatsoever but what I'm going to do, I have this, uh, these awesome tapes here very short, I think 10 minute tapes um, that are just fine for uh, these purposes uh, and I want to show you what happens when you try to record to this uh, Aquarius data recorder um, because it won't work so I'm just plugging in the uh, connector to the mic socket and it's connected to the mic socket for the, on the data recorder as well so let's uh, save a program, I have a very simple program here just prints ready and line 30 will save it to tape so let's loosen up the pause button and save this to tape and in, the, in two seconds it should put out any data but it doesn't there's no data at all and it's ready so it's done saving and just uh, to show you there's nothing actually being recorded I will try to load it back we'll put it to the ear socket here and um, okay, and I will do a new first. So there's nothing left here than load. Uh, fortunately, the keyboard is quite small, so I can press it with one hand. Pressing enter, and let's see what happens. So about five seconds, and then the program should load. And nothing happens. It still tries to load anything from tape, but nothing happens. So that's a pity. Um, I thought there was something wrong with the board. I've been uh, puzzling, searching for a solution for uh, over a day now. Um, but it seems it's just uh, the type of data recorder you're using. Because if you're using an older one, like this one, or uh, a one that um, is compatible with those old um, condenser microphones, uh, then it works well. Uh, as I will show you, so it's uh, it's still loading, but um, let's load the program uh, back again first because I've recorded it in this tape here, and then we can I can show you that saving works as well. All right, let's play this tape. I have the speaker uh, enabled as well, just so you can hear the the tape noise here or the the loading noise, and it's indeed loading because the signal is gone completely, and it's loaded. As you can see here. So uh, to uh, show you with the tape, it didn't work from the other one. 
Let's put it in here. All right. Let's do a run fairly again to save it. So mix socket first. Yeah. I'm doing this with one hand only. And make there. Run fairly and but that would work. It should work. This must be something else. Make us in, make us in. What am I doing wrong here? Must be something simple, I think just a short bit connection here. Okay, so I found out that uh, there was a problem with uh, the pin of this cable <laughs> broke off and stuck in uh, the connectors of both save and load. Uh, both of the connectors had one part of the uh, plug in it. Uh, so I soldered uh, the cable uh, inside the tape recorder, data recorder, um, because, um, well, there wasn't another way. So I want to continue this video. So we now have another plug, or two plugs actually. So let's get rid of the old one. And okay, we were saving, right? So save and load, and both are connected inside. I think we can use them at the same time. Oh, um, and I think this was the tape we were, we were trying to use, but anyway, let's find out. Right, so machine is still running. <laughs> um, it's quite reliable. Cannot say that. To this tape recorder actually. Yeah. Let's record again. Uh, monitor is on so we can hear what happens. I hope it works. Ah! Hope you can hear that. And it's ready. So I heard some uh, noise. Let's rewind this. Let's do a new. And let's load. Let's, let's see if it works. Yeah, baby. Yeah, look at that. So it works. So it's really only the tape recorder. If you're having problems with saving to tape on a ZX81, which um, is just fine for all the other things, then um, most probably it's just the data recorder you're using. So this one works. This one doesn't. And this Aquarius data recorder works just fine with a ZX Spectrum, for example. Uh, so I think this one needs uh, more of a line signal instead of a microphone signal. But this one uh, really uh, accepts uh, the lower microphone signal, which only is a couple of millivolts, and it works just fine, you know. So uh, I'm happy with that. It took me some hours to find out um, what really was going on here. So uh, another success. Thank you for watching this video, and please subscribe if you haven't. So bye. Head over to zxspectrum.shop to buy brand new add-ons for your ZX Spectrum. Lots of different products are available, for example the ZXHD HDMI interface, or the DIFMC Enjoy Pro 1 SD card interface, and lots more. Set the currency preference to British Pounds or Euro, and check out easily. Also found on our website are links to our Facebook page with weekly updates of all kinds of ongoing projects. And of course, do subscribe to our YouTube channel, with lots of reviews and the Bytelite weekly show episodes.